Hey guys, it's Karen in my review for the new Netflix film, Hold the Dark. And what Hold the Dark is essentially about is basically in Alaska, we there is basically this very deadly uh, occurrence that happens with this woman, Medora's um, boy Bailey. He is killed by a pack of wolves, and she decides to contact a uh, wolf expert, uh, Russell um, Kor, basically, to basically go and avenge his death and kill all these wolves as possible, and basically trying to neutralize this threat and things like that. But as things go on, Russell starts to realize that there is way more going on with this story than he really does, um, than it really does seem, and that's really all I'm gonna say. So, Hold the Dark overall, I was really interested in this film. Uh, I really love what I've seen of Jeremy Solner's work. Now, I have not seen Green Room, but Blue Ruin, I think, is one of the most underrated works of this entire decade. It is a fantastic revenge film that really does get you into the head of someone who really has just kind of lost everything and doesn't really have much more of a purpose to live, and uh, I just really love that movie a lot. It's so gritty and different from most of its kind, and it's a film that enough people that too many people have not seen, and I was really hoping that Hold the Dark could be another great hit from Jeremy Solner. But at the same time, I was also really worried because the problem with Netflix is that they usually get this really great talent, but they don't utilize them at all. And there are so many films that I can think of this year that could have been really good with these really great directors, but they just kind of dropped the ball on it. And I'm very happy to report Hold the Dark is not that case at all. This is a rapidly different film than anything Solner has done but a very intelligent one at that that may very well be the best Netflix film I have seen all year. But we're just getting into right now, starting off with the cast. And I will say right now, that is definitely one of the best things about this movie. This film is very well acted. I think really everyone does a fantastic job here. Let's first talk about Jeffrey Wright as Russell Core. Uh, I will say right off the bat, there isn't a lot to this character. He very much is an everyman. He's someone who is very good at communicating with wolves, and he's very much caught up in the middle of what's actually going on, and I think he did a really good job here. You know, through Russell you really start to get this unnerving sense that, holy shit, what's actually going on here? You know, you get the sense there's a guy who is very much in uncharted territory, has this relationship with these wolves, and, you know, he really does not know what he's supposed to do here. And as the film goes on, he gets a more increasingly uh, scared and just worried about the impending doom as the film really does go on. And you are feeling that same sort of anxiety um, as the film goes on as well. And I think Wright does a really great great job with that. I really did love him in this role a lot. Uh, there's not a ton to say about this role because he isn't exactly the most complex individual, but I do think he did a very good job in this film, and I really did love him here. But who really impressed me in this film is Alexander Skarsgård as Vernon, who I think was magnetic in this role. The second you meet Vernon, you are immediately interested in his character, You're very intrigued with what's going on. He's this war vet, and he is unfortunately wounded, and once you eventually get into what's actually going on with his story, that's really when this film gets very interesting. This man is very much unhinged. He will kill if he need to. You know, he will do whatever he can and to avenge this, um, you know, avenge his son's death as well, and I really did love getting into his character, you know, his character, the morality on him is very questionable, but I thought he was a very compelling character overall, I really loved where he ended up going in this film, and for me, this is easily one of Skarsgård's best performances, yet that really does make up, I think, for the lack of emotion he had in Mute, and again, this character is lacking more emotion, but it really does work for the type of character he's playing, and I really did love what he did here. He was phenomenal here. And the only other person I really do want to zero in on is Riley Coe in this movie. I've always been a fan of Riley Coe ever since the girlfriend experience, and once again here, she's really great as Medora, who, the second you meet her, there's just something really odd about her. She seems to have this sort of foreboding nature, and again, I don't want to get into it too much, but let's just say Medora is not exactly who she seems. Uh, she is hiding a lot of things, and 
you can tell she's being a little bit too forward with Russell, and I think they did a very good job of really fleshing out um, who she really is. Ko really does explore every facet of this character, and again, I think this is definitely one of her best roles yet. I really did love her work in this film. Really, everyone does do a phenomenal job here. Everyone is very well casted, and I think this is definitely one of the most well-acted Netflix films I've seen in quite some time. Everyone was fantastic here. But now I really want to get to the directing and the writing, which it's kind of hard to because I know I say this with a lot of films, but this is one of those films where you really want to be careful with what you actually say because the plot I gave you is a very vague description of what this film is actually about. What I will say is that if you've seen Jeremy Solner's other works, this is nothing like anything he's ever done. This film is much more of a slow burn. It is much more grittier than his other films, and it's a lot more complex. And for some, this may be a problem, but what I think Solner is, very, is able to do very well is that, sure, like I said, it is very slow-paced, but it also is very intriguing. It's a film that always is escalating to more um, crazy levels as it really does go on, and I really did love how he directed this film. There's this sense of creativity and this just sense of um, him really going all out. This really does feel like his magnum opus. Again, it's not his best film, but it definitely is his biggest film in terms of scope, and I think he did just a really good job directing it. There are some moments here that are extremely gritty and extremely uh, just very hard to watch at points, but then there are moments that also are really tender moments between characters, and I think those two halves did balance out very well here. The film is very much a character study, but it also is very much getting into this conflict, and I think his directing, like I said, was really great here overall, and the writing. I really do love the screenplay to this film a lot. It is very smart. It is much more complex than you'd expect it to be, and again, it's very hard to really get into. What I will say is I think this film set up the mystery very well, because the film starts off, and it really does take a lot of time to get into these characters, specifically the character of Medora. They do a very good job of fleshing her out, showing her, you know, sort of grieving as a mother, but also her sort of lack of empathy. She doesn't seem to react to her son's death in a way that you really would expect her to. And you know that something is very much off from the second that Russell does arrive, and you feel like Russell is kind of trapped here, and they did a very good job with fleshing out that dynamic of the film, but even more so when it comes to Vernon. His story is even slower paced, where it does take a while for him to actually get involved in the main storyline. For a while, you're like, why are we even focusing on him all that much? And eventually, he does come into the main storyline, and once he gets involved, that's really when this film does start to take a turn, and that's something that I really do love about overall. It really does take its time, but unlike most Netflix films, it's very purposeful why this film is as slow-paced as it is, and I thought the screenplay was just very well done here, and the film really does have a lot of interesting things to say, a lot of which I don't really want to get into, but I will say, yes, grieving is a big part of it, but it also is trying to focus on... Um, um, sort of the difference between men and beast, and I think that's a very interesting story. It's trying to focus on the idea of abandonment, uh, the idea of the heritable damage between mother and child, and again, I'd love to get more into why this is and why this film is so complex, but again, it's just a film you really do need to watch. It's a film that you really do need to experience, and that's really all I can really say about it, other than the fact that I think it is extremely very well written, all the characters are very well fleshed out. Even James Badge Dal, I really love getting into his character because similar to Wind River, which this film does have a lot of parallels to, um, a big part of this movie is focusing on these group of natives that don't really uh, get the time, you know, in films a lot. You know, these, these guys are very much outshined. They're not really covered in society. And you see this comic with James Badge Dale, who he has uh, kind of had a bit of a disregard for them, and I really love getting into that conflict as well, because you can tell he's someone who, he's a cop, and he really is trying to do right, but he does have some regrets, and he hasn't been able to really save everyone, and a very good scene between him and Tantu Cardinal that I really did love, and I think they did a very good job with fleshing out his character as well. Just all the characters here are very well realized, that is definitely one of the best things about this film. 
But I will also say, this film has by far, I think, the best cinematography out of any of Solner's films. This film is so well um, done in terms of scope. Like I said, it's much bigger than most, and there's a lot of really great visual scenes here. Some of the best scenes in this movie are just us in the cold, because similar to Wind River, where you really do feel trapped, this film makes you never want to go to Alaska. I mean, this film, you constantly are feeling that coldness, you're constantly feeling that dreary sense. Uh, you're Again, you kind of just feel like you're trapped there, because we rarely ever do leave this very snowy, uh, just bitterly cold environment, and I really loved getting into that. There's a lot of detail in the background, and I really love the cinematography here, and even the wolves, they look real. I don't know if the wolves were real or not. It was kind of hard to tell if they were real or if they were seen. CGI, but I think the wolves were very well inserted into the story. Um, they don't, if they were CGI, they definitely don't look fake, and I really did love um, the way the wolves uh, did play a role here. And again, there's a lot of really weird imagery in this film that I think is very well utilized, and uh, I would love to say more about, but this film is very similar to Hereditary in the sense where it takes a while to really get into some actual stuff. It takes a while to really show you what's going on, and the buildup is that makes it that much more um, sort of harrowing to think about because there are a lot of things in this film that you watch it and you're like, "Holy shit, that's uh, that's that's just." That's horrific to think about, and I really did love how this film didn't try to gloss over that stuff. The score here, I really do love as well. Again, it's very just, it's very intense and really does keep you in the moment. It's very sort of, um, it, it, it's just very, like I said, it, it just really puts you on edge, and I really did love the score a lot. And the editing, the film, for some, this could be a very big problem, because the film is over two hours long, and I really never felt the length all that much. I think the first two acts, it is very well paced and I definitely really did love it a lot. The film does falter a bit in the third act for me. I did think the film went on just a little bit too long. There are some repetitive conversations here and there, but again, you will get that payoff you really do want because again, the film does start off very slow, but eventually it escalates into some truly that shit stuff that I, I don't want to get into, but there is this one shootout scene in particular that is just incredible. It harkens back to Wind River last year, but it's even more insane than that film really was, and that's one of the reasons why I really do love this film as much as I do. As far as problems go, besides the editing, I will say some of the characters here I don't exactly see the point of, and I really would love to get into some more of the symbolism with this film, because there is stuff in this film that is uh, very important, but again, it's one of those films where I don't exactly know what to say. I think I really need to see it a couple more times before I can give you a full-on analysis of what's really going on, and look, I think I have sort of an idea of what's happening but I just really want you guys to go out and see it. It's a film that I think isn't getting enough attention because it's Netflix, and I think this one is actually one that you really do need to go out and see. I just will say, because of what this film is actually about, and because of the metaphors, some of the characters from a symbolic perspective don't really seem to fit into this story, and I'm just having a hard time wrapping my head around um, how they really do, like I said, uh, fit into the overall narrative here, and I, I do think that just the film does have a little bit of a hard time with doing that overall. But for the most part, Hold the Dark is everything I want out of a Netflix film. It's very slow-moving, it's very mysterious, it has some really compelling characters, and it does take a while to get into its central conflict, but once it does get there, it really never lets up. It keeps you on edge throughout the majority of the film. It always keeps you guessing. You're gonna walk away from it a bit confused, but when you really do think about it, it does make a lot of sense. There are some things here and there that, like I said, I'm still trying to wrap my head around just a bit, but but that's one of the things I really do love. I love how much thought was put into this film. I love how uh, well-crafted the story really was, and it really is different from anything that Solner has done before. So I can't even say that if you've liked Solner's previous work, you'll like this movie, because like I said, it is very different from anything he's done, and it makes me very interested to see where he's really going to go as a director from here. I really do want to see him make more films like this, because he really did do a great job here. It is by far, I think, the best Netflix film I have seen all year, and definitely is one of the ones that deserves all the attention possible, and I am definitely going to give Hold the Dark overall an A-. 
like I said, I'd love to get into this film more and really try to dissect everything that's going on, but I really just want you guys to go out and see it. It's a film that is best to go into not knowing a lot, but that's really it for this video. hope you guys enjoyed the most. Guys, saw this movie overall. Left your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.